Hey, it's Alex Rackley from Board Game Co. And today I'm doing a video, the top 10 unplayed games in my collection that I most want to play. Now, this is a bit of a companion video to a video I did maybe two months ago, but the top 10 unplayed games in my collection I least want to play. However you do it, these titles are a mouthful. Now, this is a Patreon voted video that on my Patreon, my patrons vote on different videos from time to time. And this is one that they selected in terms of what are the games I most want to play from the games sitting on my shelf that haven't hit the table yet. And I, I always have a rotation at any given point. The problem is new games come in, new games go out, and the, the desire to play any given game changes at any given point, and the ability to play any game is also situational. Some games are easier to get to the table than others. Some require certain player counts. Some require, you know, three hours of unblocked time to get to the table. Some have rule books that I just haven't taken the time to wade through yet, and it can be hard. Now, before I get into the specific 10 games that made the cut, and it was hard, I had to really, I realized a few things when putting this list together. I realized that I have a good 50 plus unplayed games, and that I also, a bunch of them, as much as, mu as, much as I want to play a lot of them, there were only about 15, 20 that I really, really, really want to play, and those are the ones I had to pick from to get to this top 10 list. But, before we get into those, I have two honorable mentions, and I'll explain why they're honorable mentions, and those are Decrypto and Townsfolk Tussle. And the reason these are both honorable mentions is as follows, because for this list, the criteria that I had in mind is the idea that the 10 games I picked are games that are going to be hard to get to the table for one reason or another. Now, Decrypto is it's an easy, light party game. I, I want to play this one because I've heard good things about it. It's, you know, taking over code names in terms of possibly the best gamers party game, although it's a little bit more gamery than code names. But it looks interesting, some clue giving, some deduction, looks intriguing, but because of the fact that it's, you know, so light and easy to get to the table, as much as I do want to play it, it's also not really a challenge. And so, I do want to play this game. I think Decrypto is interesting, or it looks at least it looks interesting, but it's not going to be that hard to get to the table, and so I'm happy to skip it as far as this list goes. And then secondly is Townsfolk Tussle, which is a similar issue. This is a game that's not yet available. I'll be covering this because they have a Kickstarter coming up soon, and this is one that looks super, super intriguing. It has it has this, this art style that's very unique. We haven't really seen it in board games, at least I don't know of any we've seen it. It's very much a boss battle game, uh, you know, in the genre of Kingdom Death Monster and the like, but with a very different and unique style and approach, and I'm mostly, most of the way through the rule book, and I'm super excited to get this to the table, but because I'm covering it for the channel, it's also, it's also one that is not really a challenge because I, I have to get it to the table, and so we'll leave this one off our list as well. Which means we're going to start this list, we're going to start this list with Roads and Boats. Roads and Boats is a splatter game. And it's a splatter game that I, well, I really want to play this one. And, and all, in general, splatter games in general, I'm a huge fan of their designs. The ones I've played have been tremendously tight and, and hard to get on the hard. That they're, they're fairly easy rule sets, but with such consequences to the actions that you, it's tense. It's tense. You can make a mistake in the first five minutes of the game and you have to reset and restart, which can very much be a turnoff. And I acknowledge that. But if you can get past that, if you can learn to love the systems, and if you can both be a good teacher to others and or to be taught well when you are first, you know, introduced to, this, to these games, to these systems, they really can be very tense and very tight and very, very much worth owning. And in particular, Roads and Boats, the reason I'm so interested in getting this one to the table is, while I have a few other spotter games that I really want to play and get, well, get to the table, Roads and Boats plays very well with two, which is, it's different. And... A two-player game with this level of depth, I don't know if I've really experienced that. I've experienced deep, very high strategy games and whatnot, but I don't know if I've experienced something with the tenseness and the, the decision skills and decisions present in a splatter game at two players. And so I very much want to get this to the, get this to the table, and you'd think that two players would make it easier to get to the table, and yet specifically this one has been, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge to see it played because it's a long game, and... It requires the right person. This is not a game you want to pull out with somebody who just likes two-player games. You want to pull it out with somebody who appreciates what a splatter game is and the amount of decisions that go into it. And along those lines, in terms of heavy games, we have Escape Plan from the Tal Lacerda, which I'll actually leave this on its side because I don't know if that will do well. And we already have a bit of a dented edge over there. But Escape Plan is what I hope to be, well, I was going to say first Vital Lacerda game, but I have now played Mercado de Lisboa, so I can't really say that. But this is one where I have heard this is the most accessible from Vital Lacerda's games. This and the Gallus I've heard equally in different measures. 
but I think this one has a lighter weight scale on Board Game Geek, so I'm more intrigued by it. Also, thematically, I like the idea of an escape far more than I like the idea of an art gallery, and so... The, ga the Escape Plan is a game that I want to really play this. I have a few Vitalis Erda games on my shelf, and I, I need to get them to the table because I generally appreciate heavy games. I, I've appreciated, like I said, the Splatter games. I appreciated, I don't know, Brass. Brass is a tremendous game. In general, you present me and my group with a tight puzzle that we have to navigate and figure out what the optimal moves are. We're intrigued. And so Vitalis Erda seems like a no-brainer to, to join that collection, and yet I haven't gotten any of his games to the table. And, and really, honestly... I'm realizing a barrier for that is the fact that I haven't actually pulled out his rule books to read yet. So I'm going to do that now while we're here. I'm going to remind myself that I actually need to read the rule book. It's a good starting point to getting any of these games played. And I'm going to dump it on the floor over there, but I'll remember to pick it up later, which should be a good starting point to getting Escape Plan to the table. And from there, next up, we have one that was featured in a recent video, Cthulhu Wars. Cthulhu Wars is a game that I put in my top 10 worst value board games. Have not played this game, but it's, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on here. The lots of cool deluxified miniatures. Maybe we'll pull something out, I don't know. But this is one that's by, it's by Sandy Peterson. I believe this is his, you know, his defining game. Defining game in this genre. Look at this guy, look at him. You know, this just hordes of plastic in the box. Hordes of, of giant elder gods that you're going to take over the world or in, use your specific powers and whatnot. And this one, actually, I did take the rule book out and I have started the rule book but sadly I got this one right before COVID hit and so my game group went on hiatus for a bit and although we sort of have started meeting up a bit it's primarily we've been meeting up more with three players than with four although now that I think about it I can probably get a fourth player for this this is Cthulhu Wars, and it's supposed to be an epic, enjoyable experience. I like games like Blood Rage, I like games like Cyclades, Kemet, I like games in that in that genre and Cthulhu Wars should be a no-brainer. I love uh, um, Chaos in the Old World is an amazing game. So you show me powers and abilities and area control, and generally that has worked well for me and my group, which means I really, really, really should be playing Cthulhu Wars. And from there we have Coloma. Coloma is a game by Johnny Pack Canton. Johnny Pack is a designer who I've I actually am friends with him, I'm friends with him, and I interact with him a bunch, but I've actually only played one game of his, Sierra West, and sadly, that was a game that I did not truly appreciate, unfortunately, and so I have been itching to get this one to the table because it looks so much up my alley, it looks very much like a game I would enjoy, the art is, of course, gorgeous, it's by the Miko, and the, the, the action selection, it has the, very much a race for the galaxy element to it of different people taking different actions and stronger actions in an Old West theme, which I think Old West themes are, I think there are a bunch of games with that theme, but none that I, I shouldn't say none, I'd have to look across my shelves, but not any that come to mind that are actually in my collection at the moment. And this looks cool. It's, you know, it looks like a game that I would very much enjoy. No idea if I actually will or won't, but at the very least I feel I owe Johnny Pack a positive review on the channel, which I guess telling you that I plan on playing this is probably not the best plan, but well, hopefully I like it. We will see. And from there we go to Lords of Hellas. Lords of Hellas is an Awakened Realms game that I have not yet gotten to the table and I need to fix that. You see, here's the problem. I have only actually played the Edge Dawnfall from Awakened Realms, and I liked it. I liked it a lot, but I didn't love it enough to keep. I thought other games gave me a better two-player tactical experience. If you've watched my channel by now, you know that I generally am not a huge fan of skirmish games. I find that they do a lot of things well, but they ultimately end up being lacking for what I want out of a game. And so the Edge Dawnfall, while I liked it, and while I was intrigued and pulled in and wanted to play it more and more, in the end I decided it was too much of a game for what I was looking for out of well, out of gaming at the moment. And so, T Lords of Hellas, for me, is... I have Tainted Grail in incoming. I didn't do Wave 1, so I have, I have... I did one wave shipping, which means it's all coming later. But I haven't actually played another Awakened Realms game yet. And recently, when I did my video on top 10 publishers that I like or whatnot, they got a ton of support in the comments. I think the most commonly mentioned name in the comments from p people who listed publishers that, they, that I missed out, that they agreed with and they wanted to see featured was Awakened Realms. This company gets a lot of love. I believe also them and Mind Clash Games. Mind Clash Games was also... Both you, both those companies have a ton of support from, from my viewers, but in terms of Lords of Hellas, again, seems very up my alley. Similar to Cthulhu Wars, this one seems like one where the, the aspect of area control and powers and abilities and all that is very much up my alley, very much a game that I would enjoy, and it has cool miniatures. I've got a very specific, unique style to the minis, and it's one that I want to play. I just haven't actually gotten to, to the table yet, and I need to fix that. I really need to fix this. This one has been far too long. I've read the rulebook twice, by the way. This one I have done my homework on. I just, 
haven't actually gotten this to the table yet. And speaking of reading the rulebook twice, another one that I've read the rulebook twice for is Cloudspire. Cloudspire is by Chip Theory Games, a company that I love, love, love too many bones. I liked Hoplomachus a lot. The only reason it's no longer in my collection is because I felt too many bones did it just better. I just rather play too many bones every time. And Cloudspire is supposed to be amazing. It has, I've heard mixed reviews on the two player experience, but on the solo and or cooperative experiences, I've heard nothing but positive reviews, which honestly is more my jam anyway. I tend to prefer that in a game like this, where it's very much a puzzle of trying to figure out the, the aspects of what your opponents have, what their abilities are, how they're gonna play out, and maneuvering that board state. Very much like games like Mage Knight or Gloomhaven or whatnot, I find that I enjoy the solo cooperative experience and something like that a lot more, particularly because I tend to come to the table knowing more because I, I'm the rule book reader in my book, in my group, not in my book. I'm the rule book reader in my group, and so I tend to know those things better. And that means in a two-player head-to-head -head game, I tend to, I tend to. It tends to not be as much fun for someone who doesn't know all the abilities the way I do. So I enjoy that co-op solo aspect much more so, and it's not that hard to avoid being an alpha gamer when you're effectively just a dictionary for the other players, where you're just there to help them out. And so Cloudspire is one that I've read the rule book for twice, not gotten into the table. I need to fix that. I have the expansions coming from the last Kickstarter. I have a problem. That is definitely true. But I need to get this game to the table. It seems to do so many things from the games, from the style of games that I like and from what I enjoy. Cloudspire very much seems like the kind of game that would be right up my alley. And then from there, we're going to go to Dominant Species. And this, this is the oldest game on this list. And I actually genuinely need to wipe the dust off because that's how old this game is. And so Dominant Species is a game that I have been itching to get to the table for a long time now. Dominant Species has been a game that... It's been on my radar since forever. This is by GMT Games. This is a, a granddaddy of gaming. And I've heard so many good things about this game. So many aspects. It's, it's very highly rated. I think it's a 7.8 on Board Game Geek, if I recall correctly. And it's got elements of area control and almost warfare, but not really warfare. It's like warfare in a more of a Euro style. This game looks so much like a game that my group would enjoy. That tense cutthroat elimination figuring out how to make your species thrive while making other species die. This is an incredibly well-rated, well-received game that has been very much on my want to play list for a long time. I only actually just got this copy maybe a year ago, but I really need to play this game. This is one like, I mean, it looks like everything that I would enjoy in a board game, and this is a game that I need to get to the table, well, sooner rather than later. And next up from there, we have Sky Tier which may well be the newest game on this list. I think Sky Tier might be the newest game on this list, assuming you exclude the Townsfolk Tussle, of course. And Sky Tier is one that I got because of because of you guys, because of the channel, that I tend to like MOBAs. One of the reasons I want to get Cloud Spire to the table, one of the reasons I love Rum and Bones, I love Guards of Atlantis, and I very much want to play Sky Tier because, hey, it's another MOBA, and, well, if I like MOBAs, I mean... MOBAs? I, I like MOBAs. I don't know. I like that experience that they give you. It's one of the few exceptions to skirmish games that so far has worked out well for me. I don't like the skirmish experience in general, but when you make it about MOBAs and suddenly you introduce all these other minions that you can slaughter, it takes away that whole aspect of, of tick for tat that I find is too prevalent in skirmish games. Rather, it's slaughter guys, upgrade, slaughter, upgrade, and eventually go head to head, which I, I tend to like a lot more, at least in both Guards of Atlantis and Rum and Bones. Maybe Cloud Spire. I don't I don't know yet, I haven't played it. But Sky Tier, I've heard so many good things about it. I've heard a lot of a lot of praise for it, which is a shame, because I this is a retail copy. I missed out on the Kickstarter. I would love to get my hands on a Kickstarter copy at some point. Although maybe I should actually play it and see if I like it first. Again, I have a problem. It's it's very evident. In any case, Sky Tier is one that I want to play it. I want to see what the hype is about. I want to see what makes this one such an interesting experience. What can it possibly do so differently from Guards of Atlantis or from Rum and Bones? What can it be bringing to the table that makes it so highly recommended from those that have played it? I want to find out. Which brings us to number nine on this list, which is Dominations. Dominations, something, civilization, road to civilizations. And this is one that is an abstracted Civ game. It's an abstracted, I don't know if it's a 4X necessarily, but it's an abstracted Civ game, which in general, I think Tom Vassell said it best, which is Civ games tend to be one of two things. They either tend to be way too long, convoluted, and involved, bringing way too much to the table that you have to know, that understand, and or just play time. A good example would be, I mean, Through the Ages, one of my favorite games of all time, but one that is so hard to get to the table that it, it's 
it's a hard one to like it's hard i mean it's a three hour game with two players it's a three and a half four hour game with three players and now i'll get like 14 comments down below saying how is it possibly taking that long either way not the point the point is domination falls into that second category where it's very much abstracted it's not a typical civ game in any way it is very much abstracted play style upgrade some stats eventually somehow win the game through all the various uh, scoring elements of, of the game i'm probably and making it clear that I have not read the rulebook yet. I know just enough to be interested in this game, and the art is gorgeous, the gameplay looks simple, it looks very appealing, very engaging, and I want to play it. It looks like a lightweight Civ game, and the last time I got a lightweight Civ game, which was Tapestry, sadly it didn't stay in my collection, it didn't fit that genre of what I was looking for in a lightweight Civ game, and I'm hopeful that Dominations will fit into that genre, but time will tell. Which brings us to the last game on this list. Only one more game, which is Pipeline by Capstone Games. Capstone Games was another publisher. When I did that video of top 10 publishers, Capstone Games also got a lot of love and support in the channel. And I can't necessarily disagree, I just haven't played a lot of their games. I, I probably have played some of their games. I'd have to take a look at what they've actually put out. But I haven't played a lot of the games, although Pipeline is very much on my radar, or... Well, technically it's on my shelf, not so much my radar, but it's on my shelf because of the comparisons I've seen to Food Chain Magnet that I don't know how fair those comparisons are necessarily, but I've seen a lot of just if you like Food Chain Magnet, if you like that heavy, tight economic decisions you have to make, then maybe you'll like Pipeline as well because it brings that same level of economic tenseness to the table. I have seen just enough negative reviews of it that, not negative, but I've seen just enough mediocre reviews that I am wondering whether it will hit that same level of love that I have for Food Chain Magnet. But there's only one way to try, and that, well, usually involves playing a game, which is what this list is about. I need to play this game. I need to play all these games. And that's basically it. Those are the 10 games I've picked, which is, again, just a quick recap. I have Cloud Spire, Dominant Species, Sky Terror, Domination's Road to Civilization, uh, Lords of Hell is Coloma, uh, Cthulhu Wars Escape Plan, Pipeline, and Roads and Boats are the 10 games that I most want to play on my shelves. That these, I need to get all of these to the table, which is time where you can help out down below, which is, I am making a commitment, some sort of commitment, I guess, I don't know how strong a commitment, but I'm making some sort of commitment that the ones that get the most love, and I'm not going to tally it up, I'm not going to count every comment, but perceptionally speaking, the ones that get the most love, that this game is a game that you should be playing, I'll do my best to get it to the table as soon as possible, possibly put out a review on it, because so far I've been doing a decent amount of reviews on the channel, I've started doing more and more reviews, but it does tend to be more Kickstarter focused, reviews relevant to active Kickstarters, and I certainly don't mind mixing it up a bit, I certainly don't mind throwing in a review of Domination's Road to Civilization if that's something you'd want to see. So I guess, yeah, let me know in the comments down below, which of these games would you like to see a review on, because I will make that commitment to getting it to the table, getting it played, and then giving you my thoughts about, well, did it make it, did it not, what did I like, what did I not like, and am I let down? Because overall, I don't know, whenever I have games, I know that not all of them will hit the table. Well, that's not true. I know that not all of them will stay on my shelves. I have a lot of rotation in my collection, but from these games, most of them I'm pretty optimistic about. I, I, I don't know what my, you know, success rate is in terms of picking the winners, but I, I think most, if not all of these, are games that are destined to stay. I have a little bit of doubts about Pipeline. I mentioned that already. A little bit of a Cloud Spire, primarily because it might be just fighting too many bones for my attention. Sky Tear, I guess, possibly could lose out to too many bones. I don't know. To rum, to rum and bones. I don't really know. But ultimately, the only way to really find out is to give these games a shot, to play them, and to release them from that sad, sad, sad spot on my shelf where nothing's really happening to them. In any case... I am Alex Rackler from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as usual, uh, not as usual, like I just mentioned a minute ago, please let me know in the comments down below which one of these games you would like to see me play, and to see my thoughts on it, review, and all that stuff. Until next time, have a good one.